this house. There's some wars in this house. There's some wars in this house. There's some wars in this house. There's some Hey, hey, Golden Babe. So we are in the How to Prep the Skin module. Um, you know that I like to begin all my clients with skin prep. That is the most important step before applying any type of makeup application that's just going to ensure a more flawless aftermath. So what I like to begin with is the Garnier Skin Active Micellar Water. And then I have my 4x4 four four that I've cut into four squares. I'm going to take some apply it on the two by two now and I'm going to gently work it around my model skin and this is going to remove any oil and dirt buildup and this is great if you're on the job and you don't um, have access to a sink to have your client wash her face. But in my case, my client has already washed her face. We've already exfoliated her skin. So if you're a licensed cosmetologist or a licensed esthetician, you can actually upcharge your client to do an express facial on her before you begin the makeup application. And having the skin exfoliate prior to, especially if they have dry skin like my model, Lala, um, that's just going to make sure that the foundation is not clinging to any dry patches on the skin. So as you can see, I'm just really working this micellar water into the brow hairs. I'm going to go over her lids just to make sure I wipe up and soak up any excess oils. Okay, so after we do that. I like to then go in with a refreshing mist. You can use um, uh, Urban Decay, you can use Mario Badescu, you can use uh, Glyme. I mean, there's all types of different refreshing mists. But in my case, of course, you know, I'm repping the brand. I'm using Golden Isle Rose Water Refreshing Mist. And I'm just going to spritz her skin. I really, really want her skin to look youthful and hydrated. So I'm just going to work that into her skin just to make sure it's absorbed. And as I mentioned before, my model has dry skin. So whatever products you use for your client, you wanna make sure that they are products that's catered to your client's skin type. So always ask them before you begin applying any type of products. So now I'm going to go in with our moisturizer. My favorite moisturizer right now is by Face Reality Clear Derma. I have a little bit on my uh, stainless steel um, makeup pad and this has been sanitized and disinfected as well as my foundation brush that I'm going to use for the application and I love to use makeup brushes foundation brushes flat brushes in general to apply my products especially with skin prep because it just gives me a more even distribution and it allows me to have more control over where I'm placing the products so you're just going to see me apply this all over the skin and you want to make sure you really get in there, guys, especially under the eyes, around the nose. Because my client is drier in these areas, even in her T-zone, she's more dry. So I'm just really working that in there. And you can see my technique of how I'm even applying the moisturizer i'm doing a tapping motion and i'm really i'm really pushing it into her skin here okay so once we got the moisturizer applied I am then going to go in with my all-time favorite primer right now. This is by Milk Makeup. You guys, let me tell you. My very first time trying this was maybe about a month ago. And I bought this to try on myself because I had heard so many good things about this primer. It is like a jelly consistency, almost like a serum. So when you apply it, it creates this really nice tacky base and it really clings onto that foundation. 
it is the bomb y'all so i'm gonna take some of that i'm just gonna squirt some here i did about three pumps or so and i'm going to take my same foundation brush that i used to apply her moisturizer but i'm going to flip it over to the back side and i'm going to work this primer into her skin really focusing on that t-zone and then fanning it out still doing that patting and swiping motion swiping motion to spread the product and patting to really push it into the skin and I'm, like I said, I'm going to focus on her T-zone area first. And then I'm going to take the remainder and spread it on the outer perimeters of her face. And I'm going to take my time and really make sure that I have this worked in, y'all, before I move on. Because having a good base before you start makeup application is key to that flawless face at the end. You really have to take your time. Don't rush this step. And you don't have to use the products that I'm using here either. You know, you start from where you are as a makeup artist. You use your favorite products. But doing this technique in the order that I'm showing you is going to ensure that your client's skin really is flawless at the end. So now my client is fully prepped. We've done her, um, we wiped off with the Garnier. We then went in with the refreshing mist to balance the pH and just add a bit more hydration to the skin. And then I went in with the Clear Derma Moisturizer. And then to prime and prep her skin, we used the Milk Hydro Grip. And then we are done. We are done with the how to prep makeup. Well, prior to makeup. <laughs> you can edit it. We are on the how to color correct module. Now, as you can see with my model here, she has slight discoloration right underneath the eye. It's almost like a blue or purple tone. And then she has just a little hyperpigmentation or just darkness around the mouth here. So what I'm going to do to fix that, we are going to take the LA Pro Girl Peach Color Corrector. And this is going to help cancel out any blue or purple undertones in the skin. Now, if you, are you, if you have a client that is maybe my skin tone or darker, you're going to want to go in with a, a darker um, orange color corrector like this one here. And this one, again, will help cancel out any purple or blue undertones. So I'm going to take my same stainless steel pad that I was using earlier. And I'm just going to apply just a tad bit on the palette. You don't need a lot, a little goes a long way. You just need a little dab. And I'm going to take my Morphe E27 brush. This is one of my favorite um, buffing brushes I like to use for um, very concentrated applications, like if I need to do a nose contour or if I need to do um, cheek contouring, blending that out, mainly for my concealers, I really love this brush. So I'm just going to take and patting motions. And I like to start from the inner corner and really focus it there. And then I'll just take the remainder that I have on my brush. I'm not going to dip back in because you don't need a lot. And if you can see, that immediately just cancels out that purple and blue tone. And you want to make sure you just blend the edges out. Being very gentle. If you can see my structure in my hand, I like to hold my brush towards the end of the makeup bar. And that just allows me to be more gentle. And it just gracefully blends out that concealer. 
I want to go on to the other eye and do the same thing not dipping back into the product but just spreading out what I already have on my brush if you need to flip the brush around to get the other side there's sometimes product there but that's it now that cancels out all purple or blue undertone so when I go in with her foundation and I go in with her under eye concealer you're not going to see that purple or blue tone under the concealer and sometimes if you don't color correct it can also come off really ashy so you want to make sure that you color correct if and only if your client needs it if they do not need it it is not a necessary step but if they do, you want to take that extra time just to do so so that they have a better um, outcome with their makeup and they don't look ashy and you won't see any um, of those blue or purple tones peeking through. So Lala doesn't have much discoloration in the skin. She just has a little around the mouth, but it's not to the point where I feel like I need to color correct the area. So we're going to move on to the next module. Hey, hey, Golden Babes, we are in the Brow Fill-In module. Um, with this module, I'm going to teach you how I like to fill in brows, how I scope the brow, how uh, what products I'm using for the brows, and I got a nice little trick that most people don't know about and probably would turn their nose up to, but I'm going to show you why I like to use this tip. So the first thing that I'm going to do before I apply any product is comb through my model's brows. For me, in my case, and what I like for my clients, especially if they already have full brows, I do not like to alter the shape. I like to keep it as natural as possible. The new wave is fluffy, natural brows. We're not doing the sculpted, harsh, dark brows anymore. We're done with that error. We're doing natural and soft now, so I'm going to show you how I like to achieve that look. So once I got her brows pretty brushed out and I can see what shape I'm working with, I am going to take my super strong hold. This is I Envy Lash Glue. Yes. Yes, I am using lash glue. Let me show you why. You can use brow gel, but you will not get that same hold as if you used a lash glue. Let me show you how I like to apply it. So I just take a little bit, and I literally just brush it through the hairs. And doing this technique will ensure your brows last all day. It keeps your hair in place, especially if you have a client who has really, really thick brows. Brow gel will not hold their brows down. I've also noticed over the years of doing makeup, sometimes brows can get really oily um, throughout the day. Even before they leave your chair, they'll be oily. Sometimes it's because of the product that was applied. So doing this technique will not only cancel out or reduce the oil buildup in the brows so that their brows look more matte and defined, but this will also keep the hairs in place as you're working on them. Even with applying your um, powder, if you're using powder, um, if you're using a pencil, which is my preference, if you're using a pomade, there's many different options you can use to sculpt out a person's brow. But my favorite is a micro pencil, and that is because it gives a more hair-like structure to the brows, and it makes them look more natural. And she already has nice full brows, so we won't need to do much with them. So go ahead and turn your nose up at the lash glue, but I promise you when you try it, honey, just wait. Just wait till you try it. And when you do, tap me in it because I want to see it. I love this technique, though, guys. I love it. It is something that I learned from another makeup artist. And ever since trying it, I've been doing it. And it makes a world of difference in the brows, I promise. As you can see, I'm just taking my finger and I'm just pushing those brows in like so. 
and that already kind of gives us that fluffy shaped brow before we even apply product so now i am going to take my nyx this is in the shade Espresso. This is a micro pencil. I mentioned before that in my preference, I like to use micro pencils, not the fat ones, not the ones with the little angle, but it has to be micro. And that is because in my case, or in just from what I've experienced, you have more control when you are using such a small pencil. You can give the brows a more hair-like stroke. So let me show you what I like to do to get that hair like stroke. I was teaching one of my one-on-ones that getting that nice, flawless, natural brow is all about the pressure in your hand. It really has nothing to do with the product per se. It really matters of how much pressure you're applying when you are distributing the product through the brows. So I personally like to start right at the tail and you can see like I'm really gentle, literally like a feather. I'm not putting any type of pressure. I'm barely touching her brows, right, Lala? Mm -hmm. I'm very barely touching her brows, but I'm still getting product on the brow. And I'm going to take my time. I'm not going to rush. And I'm just following her natural eyebrow structure. And right now, I'm just lining underneath the brow. But I'm going to stop. I'm not going to go all the way up into this part. These, these hairs right here, I love them. Because once you distribute the product and you blend it out with your brush, it just, y'all, it just does something to the brows. Like it just makes them look so natural like the product is just a part of the brow. So as you can see, I am taking my hand and I'm moving in an upward flicking motion, still controlling my pressure. I have not changed my pressure. I'm just taking the micro pencil and I'm flicking upward. I'm literally going in the direction that her, her brow hair grows. I'm not going like this. I'm not just digging in there. I'm controlling my pressure and I'm being very light handed and I'm going in an upward motion. Now with this step, I like to be neat so that I don't have too much cleanup at the end. But go crazy, you know, you don't have to be afraid to really get in there and structure that brow because we're going to go back and um, line the brows with concealer afterwards. And you're going to see me comb through. Now, when it comes to the top of the brow, I don't too much bother this part. This part already has a natural structure. She already has a fluffy brow. And, but, and remember that we laid these brow hairs down with lash glue. So you already prepped the brow for it to be set for where it needs to be. I'm just going to go in right here at her arch. This is her brow bone right here. This is her arch. It always meets to the middle of the eye. But as you can see, her arch right here it's almost non-existent. Her brows kind of go in a slanted motion. So I want to create her a arch. So I'm going to go right up in here, right in the middle of her brow, right at her brow bone. And I'm going to, again, control my pressure with flicking motions. And I'm going to create her an arch. And I'm going to bring that line down to her already existing tail and meet where I started to form her tail right at the bottom. And you can see we have like a little gap right here. We're just going to take that brow product, still controlling our pressure, and just fill in. Okay, and as you can see, 
she has a fully formed brow I'm just going to blend this out a bit more and it's all in preference guys like makeup is makeup like there's no rules there's some but then there's not you do it how you like you form your own rules you form your own techniques you do what works for you and your style everyone has every makeup artist out here has their own style of makeup i prefer something but that's because you prefer something that might be opposite to mine doesn't make it wrong so as you can see we now have her full brow compared to that one compared to that one so now I am going to take my concealers. I like to use the e.l.f. 16-hour um, camo. And for her, I am mixing medium sand and medium warm shades. I'm going to mix those two together. And I'm going to apply just a tad bit of the medium sand onto the palette. The same stainless steel palette we've been using. And I'm also going to mix the lighter shade. I'm going to take my Morphe M421 brush. This is a really tiny flat brush I like to use for the brow sculpting. And I'm mixing those two shades together. And that shade is going to, those two together is going to create the shade that I want to use for her concealer. I am now going to begin sculpting her brows, starting from the front. And I'm starting right below the brow hairs and right where that line that we formed. And as you can see, I'm kind of taking it to the very middle of her brow, forming a unibrow with the concealer. I like to use that technique because it makes sure that I keep my concealer structure as straight as possible. And when you go over to do the other brow, it's going to make sure that you are, um, that your brows are even on both sides, or as even as you could possibly get them. So then I'm going to go to the top. And as you can see, I'm starting in the middle of her brows, right where her brow bone is. And I'm going to line all the way down to where her tail is and meet that concealer right there. And you just go in and just perfect those lines. You want to control the concealer, guys. Do not use a lot of concealer on your brush because you have to be able to spread that concealer out. So I'm now going to take my M335 brush by Morphe. This is a buffing brush I also like to use for concealer. And we're just going to blend that concealer out. Now, my preference when doing concealer for the brows, I like to use a shade that's as close to her skin tone as possible, whether it's on the bottom half or the top, because you don't want a halo brow. A halo brow is basically when you see a distinctive line on the brows above it, even after you apply your foundation. You don't want that. So you want to try to pick shades that is closest to your client's skin tone, and that just helps you with blending later. even like, you know, when you go to apply the foundation. So I'm just buffing this concealer out. And you know, once you've gotten the brows down, step back a little, look at them both. If you need to go back in and fix anything, then you do so. But really take your time on these brows because the brows will make a break the whole makeup look. You want to take your time, go in and fix anything. 
even when you think you've blended enough that won't enough keep blending for me if I see any slight imperfection in the brow I just go back in with my pencil and I alternate between my pencil and my blending brush just to make sure I am happy with the shape that I have and don't be afraid to move those hairs even after you put that lash glue down don't move it or alter it too much but it is okay to still blend the brows out even after you apply that okay so i've shown you guys how i like to do my natural brow we're going to move on to the next module Hey, hey, Glenna Babes. We are in the Color Theory and Makeup plus What Are Undertones module. In the beauty industry, we like to use the color theory or the color wheel as a way of determining a person's foundation and concealer shade. A person's skin tone can range from fair to deepest dark, but a person's undertone can range from warm, neutral to cool. Knowing how to, I knowing how to identify those two aspects between skin tone and undertones will help you learn to match your client's foundation and concealer shade. So what are undertones? Undertones is basically the overall color that affects a person's hue. If you look at my model's chest, you can see almost like an aura or a glow in her skin. I like to look at the person's chest, look at their neck, or even look at their T-zone to see if I can see a secondary color. In my client's case, I would consider her as warm. She has a warm yellow undertone in her skin. Once you determine what your client's undertone is, matching foundation and matching concealer is going to be super easy. For a more detailed um, description of what I mean by undertones, check out your book that you're going to receive with the from the top virtual modules. Hey, hey, Golden Babes. So we are now in the shade ma matching for foundation module. And I'm basically going to show you how I like to match foundation, what's the easiest way for me to do so. And then I'm going to show you Lala's foundation. In an earlier module, I mentioned that she has a warm yellow or golden undertone to her skin. So we know that when we are picking our foundation shade, we need to stay in the range of warm and we need to stay in the undertone of yellow and gold so our foundations that we're going to be using today are both by Maybelline and then I have the matte and poreless 228 by Maybelline and I also have the super stay foundation by uh, Maybelline in 332 I'm going to combine these two shades why because no one's one skin tone Everyone has at least one to three different shades in their skin tone. And sometimes you have to mix foundations to get your client's perfect shade. So if you try to match one and it might turn ashy, it might be too light, or if it's too dark, you can always incorporate a second color into there so that you can get their perfect shade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what both of these foundations look like swatched on her jaw by itself, one by one, without mixing the two and you'll understand why I need to mix them so I'm going to take the Maybelline Superstay just squirt a little bit on here there and then I'm going to take grab me a flat brush now my brushes are clean, disinfectant, and sanitized. You do not dip your brush back into your foundation jar after it touches the client's skin. I'm just doing this for the sake of this video because I only need a little bit. 
But once it touches her skin, you do not double dip ever into any of your products. You just put it and dump it onto your palette. And it's easier when your foundation actually has a pump like my other one does, but this one does not. So I have both shades here. You can see this one's darker and this one's lighter. This is 228 and this one's 332. Now I'm going to have my model turn her face just that way. And you see her jawline here. I'm going to take the lighter shade and I'm going to swatch it down her neck. And then I'm going to take the darker shade and I'm going to swatch it down her neck. Like, And at first glance, you're like, Brie they're the same color no they're not let me blend this out for you so i can show you why you need to mix the two so as you can see with them mixing i'm blending out i'm sorry the lighter shade and if you can get a little bit closer is that possible it's okay we can cut that out this color is a little bit too light for her skin tone. And then when you blend this one out, the 332, this one is too dark for her skin tone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine the two and that is going to get me that perfect skin tone. I already know her undertone. Her undertone is warm yellow or gold. I hope that makes sense to you all. So now that we've got that determined, we know her skin tone, we know her undertone, we're going to go ahead and combine her two foundations together. And remember, because I've already contaminated my brush, we are not double dipping. We're just going to use our palette. And I'm going to mix both of these shades together. And this is going to get me her foundation shade that we need for her. Now, when I'm matching, you can turn this way now. When I'm matching my client's foundation, I like to look at her arms. Yes, I look at the arms. I look at the chest. I even look at the shoulders. I look at her hairline because some people can be a tad bit darker right around the hairline from sun exposure. And if you try to apply um, possibly a lighter foundation on that area, this area is going to turn gray. It's going to look ashy. I always say I'd rather go darker than to go lighter. But obviously we want the perfect foundation shade so in order to have that sometimes you have to mix and you have to try it's error it's trial and error and you try until you get it right and remember earlier today we already did her color correction so she's pretty much prepped and ready to go for foundation and I like to work from side to side. And I'm taking my e.l.f. buffing foundation brush. And as you can see, very light hands. I'm not beating on her, you guys, I promise. I'm just going to gently buff out that foundation shade. And you can see that I'm kind of avoiding right under the eye because that is what concealer is for. And don't forget to blend down that neck, y'all. We don't want to mask. You want to blend down the neck and really buff that foundation in. Make sure you get it into that hairline. Okay, so we got one side covered. Can you guys tell the difference between this side and that side? And how that foundation just evens out that skin tone. Okay. 
and we are going for a full coverage neutral glam look today so my coverage for the foundation is going to be a little bit heavier than if I was just doing a natural face And you can see, guys, I'm tapping that foundation in just like that. I'm not swiping. You do not want to move the foundation around too much. You want it to stay in place on where you're placing it. And if you had to do color correction all over your client's face, you definitely want to be careful with how you are blending in that foundation because you don't want to move that color corrector around either. And just take your time and really work that foundation in. And make sure you get under that neck. Blend it down the neck. And because her foundation matches her, it should blend into her neck as well. You should not be able to tell a difference and because my client has a high bun today we're going to also blend that foundation up into the ears just so that everything just looks cohesive in the same color and when you think you're done blending you're not keep blending keep blending and really buff it in. We like a skin like finish over here. We do not like cakey makeup. Okay. So we have completed her foundation. We matched her foundation. We had to mix two different shades to get her perfect skin tone. We have applied the foundation and we have buffed it in. So now she has a flat full coverage, flawless finish, and we're gonna move on to our next module, highlighting and contouring. Hey, hey, Conan Babes. We are now in the highlighting and contour module. We are at home stretch. We are almost finished with completing Lala's full face natural glam. So with highlighting and contouring, it is important that you add dimension back to your client's face. Sometimes or majority of the time when you apply foundation, it takes away from the natural dimensions that they had prior to. So incorporating highlighting and contouring back into their face will give them structure and give that dimension back so that their face doesn't look flat. Realistically, our faces are not flat. So you really do not want to skip this step. So I have already picked out Lala's contouring shades and I've already picked out her highlighting shades. We mentioned before, when picking out concealer shades, whether it's contouring or highlighting, you want to kind of stick to their already existing skin tone, something that's going to complement their skin tone. And if they have a warm tone, in Lala's case, you want to choose concealers, um, whether it's highlighting or for contouring, you want to make sure that they're also warm. You do not want to put cool or neutral concealer shades on a person who has a warm undertone or vice versa. I hope that makes sense. So what I like to do first, I always like to go in with my highlighting and we're going to use our e.l.f., the same colors that we used earlier today to sculpt out her brows. We're going to use those two shades for her under eye concealer and for her T-zone to give her face back some structure and dimension. So I have mixed both shades of highlighter or concealer and I'm going to now go in and I'm going to show you my highlight application. So I always like to go right here, right in the middle of the forehead. And remember, highlighting brings things forward and brightens and contouring diminishes or makes smaller or pushes back. So Lala has beautiful facial features. So I want to make sure that I enhance certain areas of her face or even make smaller. So when people highlight and contour the nose, they are wanting that really sculpted and that 
that narrow looking nose structure and you can achieve that with highlighting and contouring. So this is her T-zone. So I've applied my concealer there. Now I'm going to go under the eye and you can see that I am starting right in the inner corner and tapping motions. I am working that concealer down. And I'm forming my shape. I like to do a triangle shape. And I'm going to take that concealer up. And once I blend it out, you'll see what I mean. And you guys, we are not using a lot of product either. I'm literally using what's on my palette and what's on my brush. And because I want to brighten this area just slightly, I'm just going to take a little bit of that concealer and apply it right there. And remember, no dragging because we did color correct earlier today and we do not want to move that concealer that's underneath this foundation. So tapping motions. So we have applied her highlight. This is how I like to apply highlighting for most of my clients. But sometimes I do a little extra step like I did with here with bringing her concealer up so we can really lift those cheekbones. Now I'm going to take our contour shade and we are using the Deep Warm by Ulta. You see that keyword warm. I'm still sticking to her undertone. I'm only using concealers that complements her undertone. So I like to apply right from the stick. Now, when you're using a stick, sticks are very easy to sanitize. Or you can go the extra step into actually carving out some of the concealer. And applying it to your pad. If you don't necessarily want to go from the tube. So now that I have that, this is her contour shape. And I'm going to have Lala turn her head this way. And you can see, because she has such high cheekbones, you can see right where her contour needs to go. You need to go in between her bottom jaw here and where her cheekbone is. So right here. Sometimes you can use the earlobe, this little bone piece right here. If you take that and place your brush and just lay it right across, right at the edge of her mouth as well, that kind of gives you a really good idea of where to lay the concealer shade. So I'm just going to apply that there. And I'm not blending out yet right now. I'm just foc focusing on application and remember contouring decreases diminishes or pushes back and the way I like to do it I like to use warm shades for my clients because I can kind of contour and bronze at the same time and I'm a huge fan of warm tones when it comes to bronzing and contouring let me have you turn your head this way and the same thing I'm following her natural face structure not blending just yet right now we're just applying okay so once we have that laid down, I always do the nose last after I've blended out the highlight. 
I'm going to take my foundation brush that I was using earlier today. And then I'm going to take my buffing concealer brush that I was also using earlier today. And I'm going to begin buffing out her highlight first. And tapping motions, no swiping and no moving that product that's underneath around. You're literally letting your brush do the work for you. When you have good brushes, they do the blending for you. You're going to see me alternate between the buffing brush for the concealer and the foundation brush that I was using. And I like to do this. I like to keep my foundation brush and use it all over the face as I'm blending because I still have foundation on it from previously. And it really helps to blend all of those tones together with the um, highlighter and the contouring. And you really want to take your time on that nose. Don't rush it. Because we want a snatched nose, okay? A snatched nose. I always save the highlight for last. And I go in. and blend out my contour first before I do the under eye concealer. And you can see that I'm still using tapping motions when blending this out. Don't be afraid to move that contour around, especially on those cheekbones, because that's gonna give her that super sun-kissed bronze look. You just keep blending, you guys. That's it. Once you lay it down, it's all about the blending. And as I keep mentioning, you do tapping motions. And you blend on the outer edges of your contour and your highlight. Until you get that diffused look. Some people like to use beauty blenders. I prefer just to use brushes. Okay, so we have all of her contour blended out. We're now going to focus on blending out her under eye concealer. And I'm going to start on the outer edges. Leaving the inside portion alone for now. The longer you allow concealer to sit, the thicker it becomes and the more coverage you get without having to use too much concealer and you want to control it y'all just control you have full control over where your product goes just take your time now we're going to blend the inner corner Still leaving the inside portion alone for right now.
okay so now that we have most of the edges blended out for the highlight we're going to start focusing on the inner portion here and really packing on that coverage once you allow that concealer to sit it kind of gives you that coverage for you look down for me and remember too guys you can take some of that concealer and pack it on that eye because we will be doing her eyeshadow in a bit so if you have enough product still left on that brush use it don't get rid of it just distribute it around okay now we're going to go back to the nose and take that same concealer brush, that buffing brush we were using to contour the remainder of her face. We're going to do her nose now. So what I like to do, I like to take my contour all the way up into the brow. That just gives a more seamless look. It looks like everything is connected and everything is one. And it just really structures out that nose and just gives a beautiful nose job without the surgery. So I'm being very gentle with this. I don't have a lot of product on my brush. I'm using what I have. And I'm almost forming like, almost like a rectangle in a sense, but um, it's a triangle here at the tip of the nose. And then it's a rectangle going up. Don't take that literally and literally form a rectangle on someone's face. But if you watch what I'm doing, you'll see what I mean. I like to take it right into that brow bone here. We, we spoke about this earlier, that brow bone. Use your blending brush to your advantage and really blend that out. Be very gentle and light handed. Now, once you have that down, you're going to just take your foundation brush. And just really tap that in. And you can see we've added dimension back to her skin. She doesn't look cakey. It all looks flawless. It all looks blended. Now I'm just going to take, it's time to set her foundation now. That is super important. Because I use a combination of liquid and creams, you cannot skip this step. You have to set the foundation with the powder. Me personally, I like to go in with two different types of powder, but the first thing that I do is go on with my loose translucent powder. And this is by Laura Mercier. This this powder y'all creates such a flawless veil like finish it almost makes the skin appear poreless and i really really love it so before i set her under eye i'm going to have my model look up and i'm going to blend out that under eye you want to make sure that you get rid of all creases in the skin under the eye and the laugh lines or smile lines want to make sure it's fully blended out before you set because once you set you can't do anything with it it's going to be there it's going to be stuck so i'm just dipping in tapping off the excess and i'm going in and i'm setting that under eye and this is my morphe m536 brush it's a powder brush i love to use this for setting the face So 
So I have one under eye set. I'm going to move on to the other. Okay, so we have our model la la set under the eye. I'm just going to take a little bit of that translucent and just go around and set the remainder of her face. I want to make sure I really set and press that powder into the skin. Even with the contour, this is a translucent powder, so it will not change the shade of your foundation. That's why it is important to get a really, really good translucent powder. Because you don't want to use a powder that's going to change the shade of anything you've just done. This is just your initial set to kind of just stop everything from moving around. And then we can go in and do our secondary and third powders. So she's fully set with the Laura Mercier. Now I'm going to go in with the powder that is her actual skin tone. And I'm just going to set the bottom half of her face with that. As you can see, I am avoiding where I did the highlight. Because we do not want to alter that shade of anything. I'm just going around that border. And then we're going to take the remaining powder, which is just a little bit on that brush, and just mesh in with everything else. So now we're going to finish off her highlighting and contouring with our contour kit by Anastasia Beverly Hills. And I'm going to take this shade right here, and I'm just going to douse my brush in it. As you can see, I'm going on both sides. Tap off the excess, and then I'm going to fan my brush out like this. And I'm going to go right along where we placed that concealer earlier today for her contouring. And this is just going to, let me have you turn this way. This is just going to add more structure to her face. And we're also just setting that contour shade just a little bit more bronzing up that skin and we have completed our highlighting and contouring okay babes so now we are moving on to the eyeshadow we have completed her foundation We've done her highlighting, we've done her contouring, we've done her brows. Now we get to do the eyeshadow. So today I will be using the Morphe 350 Supernatural Glow Palette. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you the shades that we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be using this lighter shade here. We're going to use this shade here and this shade here. Those are the only three shades we're using. We're keeping it very neutral. I want a matte look today. No highlighting, no, no shimmer, no nothing. Just very neutral. So the first thing I like to do to prep her eyes is I'm taking that, con that light concealer shade that we used earlier today that I mixed with the other one. We're just gonna use the lighter one today to create her eyeshadow base. Now you can use an eyeshadow base, but for me, if I can find a thicker, um, concealer that's like a fair shade then I just prefer to use that so I'm taking the buffing brush the M335 brush and I'm just going to lightly apply that lighter shade of concealer to the eyelid and doing this 
before applying your shadow color will give your colors a better color payoff. I mean, will give your eyeshadows a better color payoff. It'll just make them look more vibrant and they'll pop more. So I'm just taking that there and just blending out the edges. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Now, once you got that blended out, you just want to make sure you just push it in there and blend those edges out, guys. Please do not leave harsh lines around the concealer because it will make it harder for you to blend your eyeshadows on top of it. So just make sure you really distribute that concealer around and really push it into the eyelid. So once we have our base down for our eyeshadow, I'm going to grab a few of my eyeshadow brushes here. and just have them on standby. Having your brushes close to you as well while you're doing makeup is going to be easier for you to navigate and get what you need so that you're not scrambling. Definitely keep your makeup organized, especially if you're on a job so that you know you appear more organized and again, you're not scrambling, trying to find product, trying to find brushes, especially if you're doing a wedding, you're very time restricted and you have to move quickly. So I have all of my materials. I have all of my materials here right on beside me so that I have easy access and I don't have to go looking for anything. So my initial shade that I would like to take again, I'm going to take a little bit of this shade right here. And I'm going to take a little bit of this shade right here. Today we are doing a no cut crease look on Lala all matte. So when blending out eyeshadow, I always like to start from the outer corner of the eye. You can really create a unique shape, a unique look, depending on where you place your eyeshadows, what color you're using, and it has a lot to do with what brush you're using as well. Because I want to do a no cut crease look, I'm going for more fluffy brushes so that I can really diffuse those colors and make them look seamless and flawless. So I'm going to start right out here on the outer eye. And I'm going to just focus this color in a padding motion. So before we get too deep into the eyeshadow look, let me show you guys a trick. Depending on what color eyeshadows you're using, if you have a really pigmented palette, it doesn't matter what brand it's from, you will have fallout. So sometimes you may risk ruining the under eye, especially if you're using vibrant colors that might not be forgiving for that concealer. You want to take a little bit of that translucent powder we used earlier today. I like to use a little wedge here. I'm going to dip it into my powder. And I'm going to just place this right under the eye. Not tamping it in too much. I just want this here. So if I have any fallout, it catches it and it does not ruin her concealer that we've already done. So we're just going to place that there. And then we can go back to doing the eyeshadow look. So as I stated before, we are working that shade right into her outer portion of her eye. And once you place that color down with your brush, you want to do tapping motions right at the edge. You wanna kind of leave the inside of the color payoff alone because that's where that vibrancy is gonna come from. And you just want to focus on blending those edges out. Very gentle, very light. Watching your pressure like I was speaking on when we were doing her brows. It's all about the pressure. And it's about letting the makeup brush do the work for you. So we're going to go back in with that same color. We're going to tap off that excess. And we're going to push that color in right in her 
inner corner, her outer corner. So now that we got that done, I'm going to go in with this deeper brown shade right here. And I'm going to tap the edge of my brush in there. I'm going to tap off the axis. Did you see that powder fly? That's why you need to do that. It taps off that extra powder so that you can prevent the fallout from happening. I'm going to go right at the edge of her brow. I mean, right at the edge of that color that we placed earlier today. And I'm going to combine them together. But with this darker brown, it's a richer, warmer brown. I'm just going to take that and I'm going to blend it towards her inner portion of her eye. This is going to kind of scoped out where her brow bone starts and ends. This is literally right in her crease. But we're not doing a defined crease. We're just defining slightly, a slight define. That's what we're going to call it. It's going to be well blended. And we're just going to combine those two colors that we used. And you can see I'm really allowing my brush to do the work for me. I'm being very light handed. I'm watching my pressure. And I'm doing slight tapping motions to really blend the eyeshadow out. So now that I have my overall shape, I'm loving it. I am going to take that concealer that we used earlier today um, to give our, um, we use it as our eyeshadow base. I'm going to take that same concealer. I'm going to take a flat brush by Morphe. This is the Morphe M124 brush. I'm just going to take a little bit of that concealer that I have left on this palette. And I'm going to tap it right in the inner corner and work my way outwards. This is going to really help this next color that I'm going to apply to just pop out. So now that we have that down, press my brush into this light color because I really want a good color payoff. So once I have that there, I'm going to go in and I'm going to tap starting at the inner corner right on top of that concealer we just placed down. I'm going to tap that light shade right into her eyelid, right in that inner corner. And I'm working my way out to about the middle part of her eye, meeting that eyeshadow color that we placed earlier today. And blending it right on in. I'm going to go back in with that brush that we used to apply that warmer shade. And I'm going to blend both that first shade and the lighter shade together doing tapping motions just to make sure it's just well blended and you can see just using three colors y'all all we use were three colors we created a really nice eye shape eyeshadow look it's neutral it's classy and it's well blended and all I used was three shades eyeshadow does not have to be super complicated especially if you're a beginner don't stress out about trying to figure out how to do a cut crease do with what you know work with what you have and really let those eyeshadow brushes do the work for you so I'm pretty happy with the shape that I have right now so what I'm gonna do is I want to line her top lid then I'm going to show you guys my technique of how I like to apply lashes to my client so um the gel liner we're going to use today is the NYX gel it's actually like a it's not a liquid but it's almost like a pomade 
gel. I'm just going to take this and put it on the back of my hand because I want to keep this product from hardening. I want to keep it warm, warmed up, and easy to maneuver. And I'm going to take my brush that I was using earlier today to brush out her brows. I'm going to take the opposite side. It's a flat angled brush. And I'm going to dip it into this gel uh, black pomade on both sides and really press it into my hands to flatten that brush out. You want to get your brushes as flat as possible when you're doing a liner. Now we're not going to do a wing liner, but I am just going to line the top portion of her eyelid just so that when I go to apply her um, her lashes, the lashes blends in much better with her actual, her natural lashes. So I'm going to place my finger here on the top of her head, place my finger here on the outer portion of her eye, and I'm going to rest this hand, holding my brush just like this, rest it here to give me some stability. And I'm going to start working that liner from the inner corner. Taking my time, doing short strokes. Flip it to the other side. And start working from the outer eye. I like to work from the inner eye, go to the middle, flip my brush over, and then go work from the outer eye and go meet back in the middle. And it doesn't matter for me if I'm doing a winged liner or if I'm just doing a simple liner across the eye. I use that technique for both when I'm working with gel liners. Now, if you're new to using any type of liner, you can use a liquid liner. Some people like to use that. But for me, I like pomade because, I f because it's so thick, I feel like I have more control when using this. So you can see we have a really nice crisp line right above her lash line. And that's going to help really camouflage the lashes that we're getting ready to apply. But before we do so, we're going to do a quick layer of mascara. I'm taking my disposable mascara wand. And I'm going to um, apply the mascara to her upper lashes just so we can get rid of that powdery look and make it easier to blend those false lashes once we apply them. So a tick, I like, uh, I said a tick, <laughs> a trick that I like to do when applying the mascara is I work from the outer corner to the inner and I go underneath first working right at the tips of the lashes and then I go to the top and I literally curl those lashes right into the mascara brush so that I can try to coat as much of the lashes as possible it's okay if you get clunks along the way you just work that brush back through and don't have your client look up until this mascara is dry especially like lala she has really beautiful full lashes so if she looks up right now that mascara is going to get everywhere so once i have it coated with one I'm going to take a second one and I'm just going to go back through and brush that mascara through her lashes just so I can get out the clunks that might be left behind. And I'm going to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle to spread her lashes back out. And there you go. She has fully coated lashes on the top. And her lashes don't look powdery anymore. So make sure you dispose of the used mascara wands. We're going to grab our lashes. We are using the So Wispy Kiss Lashes, the number eights. We're going to take them off of the plastic.
once I get them off, I'll show you guys how I like to apply my client's lashes the easiest way, the most efficient way so that you can ensure that your client's lashes actually stay on throughout their event or wedding or whatever the case may be. But before you do anything, you want to make sure that, for one, you have the right lash. Because wispy lashes, they tend to go from short to long, and they flare out at the ends. So each lash goes on a certain eye. You want to make sure that the lash actually fits your client's lash line. Make sure that you don't need to clip them down before actually applying them. So in my case, we've used these lashes on Lala before, so we know that these lashes are going to fit her perfectly. But just to make sure, just sit it on the top of the lot on the eye on the lash line, and you can kind of see where the lashes will fall and see if you need to clip any off on the outer edge. You never clip lashes on the inner corner of the eye. Always clip on the outer portion, and you do little by little because. You can always take away, but you can't add back once you clip it off. So I'm going to apply some lash glue right on this lash line of the lashes or the lash band. And I love these lashes, guys, because the lash band is super thin. It's good quality. Okay, guys, so once you apply the glue to the lash band of the lashes, I'm now going to take that same glue and I'm going to apply a, a thin line of lash glue directly to my model's eye, right at that lash band where we apply the glue. I am doing this because some glues, most glues aren't made equally and doing this as an extra step allows that band the uh, false lashes band that you already applied glue to to adhere to her eyelid better and it allows a lasting a longer lasting eye uh, eyelash sometimes you can even pull off wearing lashes um, for two days in a row by doing this method because they're on there so well so that's a cool trick that I um, have learned along the way with making sure that my la that my client's lashes stay on all throughout the day no matter what they're doing so I'm going to let that dry as you can see when you initially apply the glue it's a little white but once it starts to dry it turns blue and then it turns clear so this one has been sitting for quite some time I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have my client look down we don't want the client to close her eyes because if she does it's a possibility that her top lash line could get stuck to the bottom so you want to have them just look down and you're going to sit that lash right on that lash line right where you put that line of mascara I mean that line of gel liner you're going to sit your lash right on there and you're going to connect to the middle. I like to sit mine and push the middle in first. And then I go in and I connect my outer edge to meet her natural lashes. And then I go and connect my middle. And doing this method with not only putting the glue on the fake la on the false lashes, but also putting the glue on her lash line can actually help you better maneuver your lashes because if you have a really tacky base once you stick that lash in one spot it's not going to go anywhere you just go and you connect the lash on each side and you push it in and she's in there and you can have your client look up make sure that her lashes are well blended and they're in there guys that is the simplest way to apply lashes sometimes I take the extra step and I just go and I push that lash the both of the the false and the natural lashes together I just want to go in and make sure that we've got that all covered and we're going to go and dust or pat in that powder that we sat there earlier today So once you do that, I am now going to go in with my thinner brush, my flat brush that I was using earlier today. I want to give her a little under eye action. 
So we're going to go in with the flat brush that we were using earlier today in this brown shade here. And I'm going to tap right in. Tap off the excess. And I'm going to blend her under eye eyeshadow and connect it right to the outer edge. And you can do this with any color, guys. But doing this as an extra step, I just love the way that it creates a more smoky eye look to the eye. You just want to make sure that's really blended out. And then to add one extra pop, well, two extra pops to the eye, I want to go in with a black gel liner pencil. And this has already been cleaned and sanitized. So I'm going to go straight in with that pencil. I'm going to pull her eyelid down and just line. Her waterline with this color. And that just gives an extra pop. So once I do that, I'm going to go right back in with that same blending brush and just blend it out. And that mascara that we used before, I'm going to dip just the tip of that mascara wand in and I'm going to coat her bottom lashes doing wiggle motions in every direction just to make sure it's fully coated and give her bottom lashes some color so that they don't disappear and some structure because she has beautiful bottom lashes and there you have it guys we have completed a full eyeshadow look on our model. Can you guys tell the difference? We'll be moving on to the end of our modules. Okay, Golden Babes, we are literally at the end of our last module. We're going to do the final reveal. But first, I want to show you a bonus clip of lining the lips and how I like to create a fuller lip on a client that may not have as full lips. So I want to do like an ombre new lip. So I'm going to go in with this brown liner by MAC. This is the shade Chestnut. And I'm going to begin lining right at her cupid's bow right here right in the middle creating almost like this v shape once i have that down i then follow her natural shape but i slightly overline the lip i go right above where her natural lip actually starts and i create almost like this wing like a M taking my time I'm just mapping the shape of the lip out keeping her natural shape but just slightly overlining it this gives the illusion of a fuller lip now I do not like a overly overlined lip but doing it just slightly right above where the natural lip starts is okay. So once I got the top line, I'm going to go and do the same to the bottom. So once I do one side, I go on over to the other and meet right in the middle. Just taking my time. So once you got your client's lips fully lined, I like to go in and drag this color down, almost like you're shading like a coloring book. Color in the lip slightly on the outer edge, just so you can create almost like an ombre look to the lips. 
This is my signature nude lip look I love to do on a lot of my clients. Once you get it shaded in on all sides, even doing it in the middle just slightly, going in an upward motion, I'm going to take a flat brush. This is the flat Morphe brush. This is the M124 we were using earlier today. I'm going to take that slightly and just kind of blend that lip liner out just a little bit more before I go in with my lipstick shade. And you see how that just kind of diffuses that liner, it doesn't look as harsh. I'm going to go in with two matte colors. I am using the the Toast and Butter Lip Liptensity and the Honey Love by MAC. These are both nude shades, but I want to combine the two to get the shade that I want for her. So I'm going to go in with this darker shade first. And just place this right on the outer portions of her lip. And just blend it in with that lip liner that we applied already. And we will be topping this off with a gloss. And then I'm going to go in with the lighter shade and I'm going to put that directly in the middle. And you really want to make sure you blend that liner in with the lipsticks. I'm going to have my model, yep, do a little pout pout. <laughs> Just gently, not merging it together too, too much. Then I'm going to go in with the Makeup Revolution. This is in the shade Dripping. I love this um, lip gloss shade. I want to take that, tap in just slightly, and I'm going to place it right in the middle. And I'm going to have client pout pout again. Mm -hmm. Pout pout again. Now I want a little extra pop to her lips. So I want, I'm going to go in with just a clear gloss. This is just a regular beauty supply store clear gloss get it from anywhere and I'm just going to apply that just to the edges of her lips to really give that illusion of a foiler lip I'm gonna have her pout pout again and you guys we are done we're gonna finish off with some finishing spray And I'm going to drench her in this because I want that glow. Go in with the foundation brush. And 
and really just push that into the skin and you guys we are done we have completed our model lala's full face neutral glam what do you guys think it's like the morning time don't want to wake up i just want to stay in bed Thank you so much, Golden Babes, for tuning in into our From the Top virtual class. Trust and believe there will be so much more in store. I do have another virtual class planned to go in. Oh, shit. Okay, let's start over. Okay. Thank you so much, Golden Babes, for tuning into our From the Top virtual class. I cannot thank you all enough. Trust and believe we have so much more in store, so much more planned for you guys. I do have another virtual class coming probably within about a month or two for more detail, um, in-depth about eyeshadows, in-depth about brows, in-depth about foundation. So if you have any requests or if you want one-on-one -on -one classes, you know what to do. Deuces.